morning, everybody. Tuesday, May 3rd. Let's go. Another beautiful day. What's up? What's up? Java. Bob, what's going on, Bob? How are you? How you been? Um, probably our last day of Loop Hero. So, uh, going to kind of keep it as a back pocket kind of game for us to pull out occasionally and play, keep progressing in. Uh, but I think we're going to move to Hand of Fate tomorrow. Hand of Fate 2 for a few days, and then Valheim on Monday with uh, community members. Yeah, we'll talk about it over the weekend and stuff. We'll get a private server set up probably and start playing some Valheim. New game yesterday. What is it, Bob? I'm doing great, buddy. Thanks for asking. I'm doing great. Uh, another beautiful day to hang out with you amazing people, uh, get current on the gaming industry news and play games, man. Have fun. So I'm great, man. I'm great. Thanks for asking. Demon Slayer. Really? Really? Okay. I am vaguely familiar with the, uh, anime. I don't know much about the game. Um, what type of game is it? Maybe we'll pull it up here in a bit. Um, take a look at it. So let's do what we do every single day, hop into our gaming segment and see what we can find. That is, uh, some fresh, fresh info for us regarding the gaming industry. Yeah. Let me pull up, pull up our tab here. <clears throat> there we go. Let's get in it. Let me get my mug out of the way here. There we go. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Oh, really? See, that's what I, I thought it was a fighting game, but I wasn't, I wasn't sure if I remembered correctly. So, cool. So you can 1v1 or play story mode where you basically go through and, and, uh, like fight CPU, right? But go through like story. That's really cool, man. I like when uh, fighting games do that. Yeah, that's pretty neat. Well, I'm glad you're enjoying it, Bob. Maybe we'll take a look at it uh, after the uh, the new segment here and see what the, see what it looks like. Go through the and oh, really? That's really neat. Cool, man. Cool. Awesome, Bob. I'm glad you're enjoying it. How long have you been playing it? Have you gotten all the way through the uh, the story and everything yet, or you just been kind of PvP in it, man? Um, this is old news since yesterday. Oh, okay, cool, cool. Well, I'm glad you're enjoying it, buddy. That's cool. I'll look, uh, we'll pull it up here in a bit. Uh, if you remind me, I might forget. We got a lot of news to get through, but still doing the story. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I figured if you just started playing it yesterday, yeah, yeah. Oh, and you told me earlier, you told me above, new game, you bought a new game yesterday. Yeah, my bad, my bad, my bad, man, my bad. Cool, cool. Well, I'm glad you're enjoying it. Yeah, we'll pull it up here in a bit, take a look at it, see what it, see what it looks like. Um, I haven't played many fighting games uh, over the past, I don't know, probably four or five years, but I love them. I actually watch a lot of, like, uh, competitive, uh, or, or not as much as, as I used to, but... I really enjoy watching competitive fighting games. Uh, people that are really good at fighting games, it's kind of mind blowing. Yeah, it's it's a lot of fun, especially like some of the games that are really well built. You know, like Tekken and and uh, Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, stuff like that. It, it's cool. It's cool watching people that are really good play those games. <laughs> XR glasses could be the answer to portable gaming woes. Huh. Okay, let's take a look at these. We read about this a little bit already. I'm going to pull this up. Um, adventure game Norco draws on life in the American South post Katrina. Um, if you don't remember what Katrina was, Katrina was a tropical storm that really just obliterated like the New Orleans, Louisiana area. Yeah. So let's take a look at this. Bob, 
Spotify Island reimagines the streaming service as a video game inside Roblox. Bob, how you been doing? You said doing good. Anything been up to anything besides uh, playing your new game? How was your weekend? Uh, Epic Game Store Mega Sale could come back this month. Let's take a look at that. We talked yesterday about Square Enix selling off uh, some of its gaming divisions and IPs. We're talking like Tomb Raider, Deus Ex, what were, uh, some of the other ones, Thief. I'm glad. I'm glad. All exams are coming up. Busy with that? Yeah, I'm sure, man. I'm sure. Yeah. Well, good luck on the exams. Those uh, There's a, always an amount of stress that comes along with uh, tests and stuff. Yeah. Usually, anyways. Um, what is the name of this game where you deliver mail? We'll pull it up real quick. I'm familiar with it. Talked about this yesterday. All the Square Enix sell-off. Stray is coming very soon, which I'm excited to play. We've talked about the Prime Game, uh, Prime Gaming free games. I'll pull it up real quick again and just list them for you. Um, Dead Space 2, Curse of Monkey Island, Out of Line, Melmo Plus Express Deliveries, Cat Quest, Shattered Tale of the Forgotten King. So all of these games are free for uh, Amazon Prime Gaming. If you have Amazon Prime, you can get these games for free. They're free games. Why not, right? Even if you think you might not play them, just throw them in your library. Steam Deck can now officially run a lot more games. Take a look at that. They've been doing a really good job about getting games uh, set up as dedicated, applicable, or, or uh, optimized for running on Steam. I can't remember the word they used for it. Uh, there are a lot of other titles that have been able to run on it, but they weren't necessarily optimized for it yet. But they had been doing a good job of continually updating and, and making more games specifically optimized for the Steam Deck. And apparently it's a great piece of uh, hardware, a great, a great platform. I haven't got my hands on one yet, but uh, everything I've read about it is that, for the most part, it, it's a pretty solid uh, platform. So, if you need something portable handheld, and to play your PC games on, check the Steam Deck. Page three. I'm not gonna dive into that. What to look for when choosing a smartphone for gaming? I'm not going to look into that. Um, I mean, th there are, there are, what I'll say is most current gen, mid to top, middle of the line brands to top brands of mobile devices are very good gaming devices. If you want something specifically that is a smartphone built specifically for gaming, there are some brands building smartphones, mobile devices, specifically for gaming. And take a look. I mean, obviously, it's it's just like a PC. Anything for gaming, you're going to, you know, there, there's the, the ones that are built specifically for gaming are packing in more RAM, uh, better processors, better screens visually, uh, things like that, right? So, uh dive in we've hit on some of those in the past when the specific devices come across the the um articles here in the news segment but uh generally that's what you're looking for same thing on the pc side uh better graphical uh chip in it stuff like that so do your research if you're in the market for something like that and uh you'll find you'll find something A lot of it has to do with 
if you have a price point you're looking for and things like that just review things review things do your research anytime you're gonna buy anything substantial especially in the tech market uh, the best thing you can do is just do your due diligence educate yourself research over multiple sites of professional reviews and see where you what you can find on user reviews of the device as well get a nice comprehensive look at what the device has to offer regarding how much you're wanting to spend on said device or peripheral or what have you okay Thing, I'm not going to jump into this either. Bose gaming headset versus Razer gaming headset. It just fall straight back to what I was already talking about. There are a ton of headset brands out there. I use a pair of Sony's. I love them. I love them. One of my big things is, look, here's what you have to find out. You have to find out what you want for your specific situation in regard to a headset. Do you want something that you're just only going to be able to use really on your PC? Or do you want something a bit more versatile? That's why I bought these. They're 3.5 millimeter, but they're also Bluetooth wireless, right? So um, it allows me to use these when I'm gaming on my PC or if I go out somewhere or take a trip, I can actually take these with me. They've got a long battery life and they perform really well. I did a lot of research uh, for the price I was willing to spend. Uh, these were about the best I could find on the market at the time. So that's just what I prompt people to do. Do your due diligence, educate yourself, and find some a few different brands, makes, and models that you're going to get a good quality product for what you're willing to spend. And see where you can find, I'll, I'll show you the site I use quite often. It's called Slick Deals. SlickDeals.net. Okay. If you're in the market for something, use Slick Deals. It's a community driven website. Um, a lot of people, if, if you come across things like, uh, let's look at headsets. You know, th these are all, how many people are rating this as a good deal or they can go negative. How many people are rating it as a bad deal uh, where it's posted at? Uh, you can go in here, you can look at all the comments that people have left about what to expect from that device, things like that. So it's a really good site to use in my opinion. Change this uh, search up. So again, Tomb Raider, Thief, um, Deus Ex are no longer part of Square Enix's IPs. They got bought, which I'm okay with. I, I feel like Square Enix has fallen off. They're not producing quality products most of the time. They rely on these big names they have that, uh, like Final Fantasy, mainly. Uh, the biggest one, Final Fantasy, uh, one of the biggest ones they have anyways. And they just know that people will buy, you know. Until we decide we're not. PlayStation's hiring for an acquisitions manager. These big companies are looking to absorb as many other companies as they can. It's not surprising. It's just the way the industry is working. There's always been an amount of it, but it's like kind of exacerbated at this point. It's really being driven to a high level. Because you see like Microsoft making the acquisitions of Activision Blizzard and you know Sony taking in Bungie buying Bungie and and you know Netflix is buying you know boss fight and I mean they're all just they're all in this war of who all, who can we get who can we grab you know
covered a lot of these kinds of topics, man. Uh, free Amazon games, we've already hit on those. Netflix, we've talked about just about every single day in the news, Netflix comes up. TLDR, Netflix's subscriber base is dwindling. They are pivoting into gaming. They are telling subscribers they will have 50 games on their platform by the end of the year. The most uh, notable that they are really promoting at this point coming up is their Exploding Kittens game, which will be uh, joined alongside with a, a animated series. Uh, if I remember correctly, it's more aimed towards adults, maybe mature content. Um, probably, anyways, with Exploding Kittens. But... They've acquired a few other, uh, like I said, they've got Boss Fight. I can't remember the name of the other studio they acquired recently. They're pivoting hard. They're pivoting hard. They're, they're trying to get into this world of gaming. There's a ton of money in it. It's not easy to do, though. They have the capital to invest. They have a name to stand on, which is good. But we'll see how it goes. Right now, it's just mobile games. So, which, there's a huge market for mobile games as well. So, I'm not, I'm not. It could definitely work. Talk about Sonic 2. We've saw, talked about NFTs a lot. Uh, again, a lot of the stuff we've talked about, you go see the uh, previous news segments uh, on YouTube. They're on YouTube. And you'll get a, a look at some of the other topics that we've, we've covered over the past uh, number of days or whatever. We do this every single day. I upload the uh, the segment to YouTube uh, that evening, every evening, so you can find them on there. Best selling Alienware gaming PC is seven hundred dollars off today. Uh, we'll see what that's about. I am actually a proponent uh, of building your own. I have been since I was a kid. Um, I think th there are a lot of people that use computers every day that have no idea how a computer works. And especially if you're using it for work or you're a content creator or what have you, I think that diving into building a PC gives you a better understanding of how it works and how to troubleshoot something if things start going bad. Yeah. So I know that's not in the cards for everybody. A lot of people don't feel comfortable building a computer. But if anything, start small. Build something small. Go with start start with like a Raspberry Pi device or something and just mess around with that. And then see if you can work your way up to building an actual like desktop PC. It doesn't have to be like a Troubleshoot this, bro. What's up, Wick? Uh, <laughs> I actually love that. Even um, it doesn't even have to be like a uh, a full tower PC or anything. You know, just work your way up incrementally. If if you're using tech all the time, I feel like it's only in your best interest to. Uh, have at least a little bit of an understanding of the components, the way they interact with one another, the way they work, their functions, what they do. That way, if you start having issues, you kind of have some kind of thought process along where the issue could be coming from, right? Yo, Mamzelle, what's up? Wick, what's up? But we'll look. I know it's not in the cards for everybody, so... If there's a sell, significant, apparently, sell on, on a PC or whatever, we'll take a look. We'll take a look, see what it is. Let's go page four. We don't have a ton of stuff this morning, actually. Yo, it's a nice, gloomy, rainy day. Love it. I forgot my necklace. I need to go put my necklace on. Feels weird without it. I took it off because I took my monthly shower today. 
You know, you guys know how it is. Monthly shower. You can play Elden Ring with a Fisher Price toy. Dude, you can play Elden Ring or the Soulsborne. You can play almost any game with any kind of controller you can come up with. You know what I mean? People have beaten Elden Ring with like Dance Dance Revolution pads. They've beaten Elden Ring uh, with driving. Uh, what are they? Like little driving station. I can't even remember what you call them right now. But uh, all kinds of stuff. Guitar Hero guitars. And you can, you can play these games with anything, you know? wild it's wild seeing people do it kind of mind-blowing man uh, let's hop into these if you are in the market for a PC alienware gaming PC is 700 off let's take a look <clears throat> look here's my thing I if you're not familiar Alienware is just Dell's like gaming series of or more high performance PCs, okay? So it would be kind of like the relationship of cars, if you will. If you're not aware, a lot of car companies, right? They've got like their standard line or or a company, whatever, like Toyota, right? Toy I'm not comparing Toyota to Dell, so don't do that. Don't <laughs> like I'm just giving you an example. Like Toyota has their line of cars, and then they've got their more luxury line of cars, right? Which is Lexus. Same thing with Dell. Dell has their like base model stuff, which is always going to be Dell. And then you can get into their Alienware stuff, right? Which is more supposed to be better built, higher quality uh, hardware, stuff like that, okay? Uh, more towards gaming is where Alienware has always been kind of aimed. Uh, whether you enjoy playing games on consoles or on the PC, you should always be on the lookout for gaming deals for the chance to upgrade your gear within your budget. No shortage of gaming PC deals on the market that you can combine with gaming monitor deals to build your dream rig at a more affordable price. One of the offers you don't want to miss is Dell's price cut for one of its best sellers, the Alienware Aurora R12 Gaming Desktop, which is down to $1,300 from its original price of $2,000 after a $700 discount. Here's the thing. Apparently, graphics cards are back, coming back into supply. Graphics cards are also um, coming back down to retail price. So we're going to start seeing computers, computer manufacturers have better deals on stuff probably. Okay. The uh, Aurora R12 gaming desktop is powered by a... An 11th gen Intel, okay, so $1,300. On sale for $1,300. 11th gen Intel Core i7 processor. Which one? An NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3060 graphics card. A 3060. Won't have trouble running the latest games. No. Gaming PC also comes with 16 gigs of RAM. Which is a, a good baseline for modern game systems. I would implore people to start looking at putting 32 into a PC. Um, gaming, it's not always, you're not always going to need that much RAM. Okay. Uh, but there are games being built that utilize RAM to a higher level than what we have been used to over the past and so you're only going to set yourself up. You can always, you know, you can always upgrade RAM. But just understand that. 16 gigs is a good amount. Doubling that up is going to really set you up to not have to mess with the RAM side of things for quite a while in a PC like this. Uh, now, especially where, where RAM comes into uh, huge usefulness is, you know, Lots of processes open, um, lots of tabs, and and you like sheep? Weird, dude. Good. Not rams? Well, 
That doesn't surprise me about you, Wick. <laughs> um, especially if you're into doing any kind of like video editing, stuff like that. It, those are usually very uh, high memory intensive, RAM intensive processes, right? So uh, just depends on what all you're going to be doing. If it's just for gaming, 16 will be fine, I'm sure. But 32 is always going to set you up better for, for moving forward. And you can always upgrade from 16 to 32 uh, if you want to just start out like that. Um, equipped with a one terabyte solid state drive, which supports should provide ample storage to install several games at a time with all their necessary updates and DLC. Yeah. In the past, it's been kind of hard for people to transition from uh, hard disk drives to solid states just because there's a pretty huge price difference. Um, you've seen that kind of level out over the past three, four years, really. Um, and solid state storage drives are just incredibly faster than uh, an HDD ever will. Even high RPM HDDs. You're just not going to meet what a solid state drive does. So, um, that's good. Power supply unit swing arm. Benefits like toolless graphics and expansion bay upgrades. PC design also ensures fluid and efficient airflow through its components. Yeah. Um, It doesn't actually give as many details about what's in this PC as I would like. Look, the core of your PC is uh, what everything kind of is built off of as well to take into consideration. I mean, gaming PC, the most important parts of it are going to be your CPU and your graphics card, right? Your, your GPU. But there's something to be said for having a nice, good quality motherboard in your PC. And this is where uh, quite often you'll find... These companies that manufacture PCs and that, you know, it's like, a, it's a gaming PC. But they don't usually tell you what motherboard is in it, right? You have to, like, go search it out for yourself. Uh, you have to go search out what motherboard is in these PCs because quite often they go with, like, a low-quality motherboard. And that is, like, if you will, the body for what everything else is going to be connecting through hooked up to running uh it's 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 like the nervous system kind of of your pc and you want it to have a lot of good uh you want it to be good quality you also want it to have some like built-in features you know nice built-in features like uh real real nice quality uh ethernet ports and wi-fi and maybe bluetooth and there's all kinds of things to take into consideration when you're looking at these pre-built pcs okay Nice, uh, you know, sound cards and, and chips and stuff like that. You know, it just, there's a lot to look into, a lot to consider. That's where I feel like building your own computer, you're doing your research, you're finding the parts you want and need and can fit your, uh, optimally what you're trying to build a PC for and um, know exactly what's in there. Makes, it's always made me feel a little bit more secure in my, my uh, rig than I would ever buying it off of another company. And I've heard horror stories, horror stories of people buying pre-built PCs, having them break down, and then trying to get them repaired by the companies they bought them from. Um, because they're not built quite often very well in the first place, and then they break down, and then trying to get the company to provide you support if they're is a warranty or whatever is pretty brutal most of the time. Steam Deck can now officially run a lot more games. Valve's PC Portable has more than double its efforts. Has more than doubled its efforts in the week since launch. Yeah. Um, when Valve's Steam Deck launched back in February, it could only certifiably run a relative handful of the platform's thousands of titles. The exact number was 399, but now just a few weeks later, that figure has roughly tripled. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they keep pushing out more that are like verified, but and understand what what's verified. Um, uh, that's what they're that's what they're considered, right? Is that what it said? 
I think that's what they're called is, is verified uh, Steam Deck verified on Steam. And that means they're actually optimized for the device, right? It doesn't mean other games won't play on it. They just won't play probably as nicely because they're not configured to run on the device optimally yet. Anyone buying a Steam Deck in February uh, or earlier really since to or earlier really since to get one then you would have had to pre-order back in 2021 might have been concerned with the size of the list and the fact that some of the biggest video game series around weren't going to be playing nice with their new handheld now that we're in early May though things have already vastly improved there are a number of places you can track the number of games playable on the system boiling steam have been putting them in chart form so that's what we're looking at today there you go cool yeah so see here's what I was talking about this is the big difference right uh, for as far as the Steam Deck's concerned, there is there are playable games, and then there's verified games, right? Your verified games again are the ones that are going to be optimized for the device. They run very well. Uh, they they are there are configurations specifically for running on the device, things like that. Playable is you can play it on the device, but there might be some quirky stuff because it's not actually optimized for the device, right? Um, as you can see, things mostly shot up during March have slowed down since, but I'm looking at this more of a how far things have come since launch kind of deal. Not just an examination of the last couple of weeks. At time of posting, there are now 1,289 games that are fully verified and a further 1,169 that are playable. In practical terms, let's apply those figures to my own Steam library, since that's how I took an informal look at support back when the system launched. In February, only 59 of my 810 Steam games were fully verified. Now, 131 of them are. That's progress. Which leads me to, this doesn't mean games not on the list don't work at all. It just means they haven't been fully tested yet. You can expect this number to keep on climbing as more and more results come in. If you want to keep track of this stuff going forwards, uh, ProtonDB is another great place to bookmark. Okay. If you guys are interested, there's the link. That way you can take a look at all the games that are being verified and are playable, stuff like that. But that's good, they're, they're continuing to progress and that's what you would ask. XR glasses could be the answer to portable gaming woes. Looks like they work really well on the couch too. That's a chonky set of uh, glasses right there. Portable gaming is huge in 2022, especially in the PC gaming space, with hits like the Steam Deck really showing us what these little machines can do. Being able to play games on the go with ease is a huge win, but it does have its downsides. Tiny portable gaming is convenient, but it's also kind of tiny. When it comes to screens, they're not always enough to, for a full immersive experience. Of course, most portable consoles and even the Steam Deck itself can be plugged into a larger screen. That immediately takes away from the portable part. Still, looking at a small screen bent over can be pretty uncomfortable, as we found when we took the Steam Deck traveling. This is where the X, where XR, otherwise known as Extended Reality Solutions, could be the next logical step. Future Feature 1 is one such solution. Currently on Kickstarter, looks fairly promising. It's a set of glasses that act as a 120-inch screen for the person wearing them. These aren't smart glasses like Razer's Anzu that give notifications and other features. Instead, they are specifically a portable, wearable monitor. That's kind of wild. It's not an entirely new concept, but it's one of the first I've seen designed specifically with gamers in mind. The glasses can be connected to a vice via a cable and also support 5G and Wi-Fi connections. Also got boasting rights on being the first Android TV licensed wearable and is preloaded with both video and gaming streaming services. Also supports remote play, so you can use your own hardware on the go. Uh... Cool. All on a virtual screen, you can wear just like glasses that displays 1080p video at 60 frames per second and even gives spatial sound. The Veture 1 Z XR uh, specs have a few other neat features, which makes them feel more feasible than other solutions like VR. Being able to switch between immersive and ambient modes lets you put what you're watching on a small screen to the side, freeing up your vision for the outside world, which feels like a must for use out and about. Plus, there's even an adjustable toggle near the... Uh, for the nearsighted among us who immediately looked at this and wondered if they'd be have if they'd have to be double glass to see. Of course, not having our hands on this is hard to say how it works in person. Several videos demoing the device which look promising, but that is exactly what marketing should do, yes. Still, if it works as demonstrated, color me interested. 
in uh, the video at the top of the article demoing use uh, on the Steam Deck specifically. Once plugged in, the screen was immediately transferred to the specs. Looks like an easy, convenient solution. Let's hope it can live up to the hype. Okay. Here's the, the important part. For the Keen, you can get in on the Kickstarter, which still has some early bird options available at the time of writing. Chivas will get you a set of Future One glasses for 400 US and is set to ship in October of this year. But if you're happy to wait and see how they fare, it looks like these will retail for about $550 when released. You know what would sketch me out about these? And I'm pretty good about this, but it would still sketch me out. I'm just leaving my glasses somewhere. <laughs> I've done it. I've done it. I'm pretty good about hold, uh, keeping track of my, my stuff. I don't, uh, I haven't done it very often, but I have. I have definitely lost pairs of glasses and stuff just by like setting them down, forgetting that I set them down. Uh, I think having something like this would make you pay a little more attention to that. But uh, I think there's always the chance. They seem really neat. We'll have to keep our eyes and ears open and see, uh, you know, what more comes of these. So that's kind of that's cool. That's kind of cool, man. Technological evolution, baby. Let's take a look at this. Adventure game Norco draws on life in the American South post-Katrina. Set in a near-future Louisiana, struck by disaster, the award-winning title brings fresh ideas to the point-and-click genre. In 2012, I spent a few days in New Orleans while hitchhiking across the American South. City delivered exactly what I expected. Wooden townhouses with front porches, trees trailing Spanish moss like sea monsters, jazz bars uh, disgorging partygoers, and blue notes into the French Quarter. What I hadn't anticipated was how much visible dev devastation would remain seven years after Hurricane Katrina. Collapsed buildings, swampy streets, dirty brown streak uh, marking the high water line just below the roof of an evangelical church. Waters had mostly receded, but the scars remained on both the city's geography and its psyche. Same scars were the inspiration for Norco, a new point-and-click adventure game that won the inaugural Games Award at last year's Tribeca Film Festival in New York. Its name and setting reference the real town of Norco, Louisiana, home of lead developer Yutz, who grew up in the shadow of a uh, shell oil refinery that exploded during his childhood in 1988, damaging his house. Following Katrina, he wanted to make a work that explored life on the margins in his state, where people try to find meaning in a brief lull between cataclysmic disasters, natural, industrial, and cosmic. Uh, in a warring near-future U.S., you play K, returning uh, from an itinerant live to her hometown following the death of her mother who is investigating suspicious activities at the local oil company game plies players with a steady flow of alluring mysteries where did your brother go what did your mom find in the lake why is there a uh, circuitry hidden behind the face of the virgin mary statue in your front yard more than anything you'll want to learn more about this fascinating world which despite its robots and biomechanical birds feels like a deeply authentic evocation of the south made relatable by its accretion of environmental details and the quirky behavior of its characters. Though it seems distinct, distinctly retro in the age of epic open-world blockbusters, the humble point-and-click adventure game has given us two of the most brilliant games of the past decade, Kentucky Route Zero and Disco Elysium. Yes, I want to play Disco Elysium very badly. Uh, these occupy a continuum with Norco, all three offering brilliant writing, memorable characters, and a penchant for using magical realism to reflect insightfully on our own world. Norco's writing nods to Southern Gothic authors such as William Faulkner and uh, Cormac McCarthy, alongside genre writers Raymond Chandler and William Gibson. Looking at a vehicle in your garden, you were told this truck was your grandfather's. You remember riding in his lap while he let you steer. Uh, the dead wasps that collected behind the seat. The smell of greasy grease, whiskey, and nicotine. <laughs> that's, that's, that's funny. This terse, stylish language is studded with uh, sharply observed local vernacular and occasional bouts of impressionistic poetry whose adventurous metaphors only rarely stray into purp uh, purple, purple prose. Uh, that's great. I love great writing. I, uh, 
Pillars. Pillars of Eternity has some of the most excellent writing I've experienced in a video game. Uh, both of them. Very, very good. Uh, that was some of the greatest part about playing those games, and we spent over 300 hours in both of those playthroughs, was how great the dialogue was, how great the writing was in those games. It was fantastic. There's a lot of other great things about those games, but... Uh, it's definitely something to appreciate playing those games is how well written they were. Um, the point and click uh, gameplay gives Norco a cozy throwback quality, as do the pixel art graphics, which are wonderfully surreal and often painterly. Yeah, there's also a steady stream of new ideas, turn-based battles, uh, memorization, mini games, a staring contest with a stuffed monkey, and a mythical voyage uh, through a swamp to avenge a wronged crocodile. Game's chief pleasure is its ability co to constantly surprise players through its six-hour runtime, particularly as the story strays into wild metaphorical territory in its closing act. For all its retro trappings and absurdist storylines, this is a game whose concerns remain distinctly modern and frighteningly, frighteningly real. You will encounter climate catastrophe, mistrust of the media, apps that prey on poverty, and cults that promise to make sense of all this chaos. Each theme is grounded by the game's distinctive, flawed, and hilarious characters who find moments of connection and grace despite it all. It makes for a joyous and sobering voyage along the uh, periphery of the great American left behind. Available for Mac and PC from Steam and currently on PC Game Pass. It's on PC Game Pass right now. Uh, I, I would really like to play this, I think. Norco, huh? I need to log back into Steam. Uh, let's go real quick. I'll log back into Steam so we can full screen this. Give me a second. Let's take a look at this real quick. Good. I think we're good now. Okay. Huh. That looks awesome. That looks awesome. Uh, I might play this pretty soon. Uh, probably going to play this pretty soon. That looks like that could be a nice, cool, immersive, like chill playthrough for something to do at some point before too long. So I would really like to play Norco. That looks pretty neat. That looks pretty neat. I'm glad we came across this article. Very cool. Uh, Spotify Island reimagines the streaming service as a video game inside Roblox. Introducing Spotify Island, a new music themed extension of Spotify inside Roblox that will sell in game band merch. Spotify is entering the gaming market. The company has announced Spotify Island, a new location inside Roblox where fans can meet up, take on missions, buy band merch, 
Celebrate music together in the metaverse. The metaverse. Spotify has described the island as a paradise of sound that aims to bring fans and artists closer together. Spotify's first big push into gaming, they are the first streaming music platform to have a live destination inside Roblox. But Spotify and gaming are already connected. Spotify has 2.2 million gaming-related playlists. Company said in a presentation attended by GameSpot, arrival of Spotify Island in Roblox today, May 3rd, is Spotify's attempt to reach the next gen of fans and subscribers. Executives Aliyah Calhoun, Global Head of Partner Marketing, and Abby Stewart, Director of Business Development, said. Um, interactive, an interactive experience, Spotify Island is a reimagining of the Spotify brand as the video game via Roblox. Players will immediately notice the island's green color scheme, which is meant to match Spotify's official, official branding. Spotify Island itself is described as a meeting place for players to play, explore, and connect with the aim of bringing artists and fans closer together. Gameplay involves platforming and parkour. Players can collect items spread throughout the island and track their progress on a leaderboard. One of the key components to Spotify Island and the visual and the appeal for artists in particular is merch sales. Spotify is partnering with artists to sell virtual merch that Roblox users can use on Spotify Island and throughout Roblox. Similar to how Spotify pays artists for streams of music, artists will also receive a cut of the virtual merch sales via Roblox. So skins, basically. They're selling skins. The success of Spotify Island will likely come down to the caliber of artists that Spotify can partner with. The company is starting with some big global names. Uh, Korean pop stars Sumi and the K-pop band Stray Kids will sell March merch on Spotify Island through Roblox, with more artist partners being announced later. There will also be four free items available to players for completing missions on the island. Um, in addition to the main island, there will be sh offshoots. First of these is K-Park, a land themed around K-pop music. This will launch in the coming weeks, and there will be additional partnerships of this nature announced in the future for Spotify Island on Roblox. Spotify Island has support for its soundtrack music offering a, a offering of royalty free tracks so players can listen to tunes inside the game as they play. In the future, Spotify teased that additional elements of the Spotify service will be baked into Spotify Island, uh, though whether or not genuine licensed music offerings are made available remains to be seen. There could be copyright issues. Well, that'd be strange in uh, today's day and age, yeah. Also, during the presentation, Spotify confirmed that Spotify Island will have no third-party ads. Additionally, Stewart spoke about how it aims to provide a low-lift option for artists and bands who want to engage with fans and reach new audiences by offloading this to Spotify to help do the work. Okay. Well, there you go. Spotify Island. Everybody's branching out into gaming, man. I mean, there's a lot to lot to be done with it. Many different facets of, of working your way into gaming. Um, it's just there. It's there. Everybody wants in. Epic Games uh, Store Mega Sale could come back this month. Epic Games Store users are discussing the possibility of the Mega Sale returning in 2022, and they've got an unofficial schedule already worked out. By now, Epic Games Store has solidified its place in the current gaming climate. PC platform wars seem to have settled down to a point. Still, free game giveaways and massive sales that are bolstered further with $10 coupons that are ongoing on the site, and many people feel certain that Epic will continue this practice through 2022 as well. The Epic Games community uh, seems to believe that there are huge sales coming up as well. And one user has created a big unofficial schedule that could give others a sense of when Epic's ne next big push could take place. Of course, it's immediately worth pointing out that this is an unofficial and uncorroborated schedule. But there are reasons to believe it could be getting some things right. Reddit user uh, Neoacinic. Neoacinic? Azinic? Uh, has come up with an unofficial Epic Games Store schedule that uses 2021 sell date 
dates as a as well as information for previous sales held in 2022. As a result, uh, this individual believes that Epic Games Store Mega Sale could be coming back once more this year and that it might kick off on May 19th. <clears throat> Since Epic had an incredible April, it's not too big of a stretch to imagine that it's looking to galvanize its community with another series of huge discounts. Again, this is a well-informed guess. But we could have a, uh, a nice sell coming. Okay. We'll have to see later on, a couple weeks from now. A couple weeks from now, potentially. So we'll see. Um, last but not least, video game late transports players to the 80s to deliver mail in a fictitious Oregon town. Yeah. Um, I've seen, or I, I remember seeing stuff about this game. Earlier this month, a Netherlands-based uh, maker of video games, Gamius, brought their narrative game to PlayStation consoles. It's called Lake. It takes place during the uh, 80s in the fictitious Oregon town of Providence Oaks. Players take on the role of Meredith Weiss, a 40-something-year-old woman who returns to her hometown to cover her father's postal delivery route for two weeks. Players are given a list of addresses to deliver mail to every day except Sunday and are given the freedom to create their own route. Uh, Dylan Nagel is the game director of Lake. He and the other developers weren't planning on, on the pandemic to feature in their release when they started developing the game four years ago, but the appeal of inhabiting a different world became undeniable. Uh, it had to do with escapism, he said. We wanted to find a version of life which is universally appealing. Yeah. Uh, while the idea of driving around a, a car delivering mail was the end product of the game, uh, Nagel said this was something many players weren't expecting. Uh, nobody trusted this concept. Yo, you're good, Bob. You're good, buddy. Uh, collectively, we are so well-trained or even force-fed drama or external forces, we simply don't trust idyllic, idyllic situations anymore. Um, and so this is literally what it is. Like, you just drive around this town and, like, <laughs> and deliver mail and stuff. It could be really chill. It could be really chill. Shout out to all the mail carriers out there, yeah? Uh, postal workers. The the town of Providence Oaks is based on places like Ben, Sisters, and Astoria, filled with quaint houses, small businesses, and plenty of trees that ring a massive lake. Uh, while games like Alan Wake or Days Gone use Pacific Northwest scenery to create tension and mystery, Lake does not uh, uh, does the opposite. Uh, Nagel said that while in the beginning this concept felt new to players. Many quickly began to appreciate it and were relieved that they didn't have to look over their shoulders. It has been, in a sense, healing for a lot of players. Cool. Yeah, I mean, it could be, I, I've seen a little bit about it. It could be a chill little playthrough, you know. It's just running around delivering mail. I don't know. I don't know. The atmosphere looks really cool, you know. Uh, who knows? Who knows? That's pretty neat, though. Um... What was, uh, let's look what Bob uh, was talking about earlier. It was the uh, Demon Slayer game. Demon Slayer game. Bob was talking about playing Demon Slayer over the past day. So let's take a look at what Demon Slayer has to offer here. It looks nice. It looks nice. Got a lot of 89% uh, of the over 10,000 reviews are positive. That's cool. I like fighting games. I haven't played uh, fighting games for a while now. That's what I was saying earlier, but... Um, I really enjoy fighting. And I, I, I think that people are, that are really good at fighting games. I love watching like competitive tournament fighting game play and stuff. It's, it's a lot of fun that yeah, people are wildly, wildly educated on everything that has to do with, uh, the fighting games that they're immersed in. And it's really, really cool. It's really cool. They're really good at them, man. Like anti-airing when people try to jump over or at you and, 
um, the the you know the frames that each attack kind of gets, uh, whether it be like plus or minus frames and how to react uh, to other characters' frames on their attacks, and it, it's just it's kind of bonkers, man. It's really cool. It's really cool. All right. Uh, unless anybody has anything else for gaming or for gaming news, excuse me, then uh, we will be working our way towards Loop Hero. Yeah? Yeah. So, um, Loop Hero today. Again, if you're not, if, if you haven't heard, we're doing Loop Hero today. It's going to be kind of like a put it on a shelf back pocket kind of game for whenever we just want something different to play occasionally. Uh, I like Loop Hero. Yeah, but I want to try out um, Hand of Fate 2. So we're going to try out Fa Hand of Fate 2 for the rest of the week. And then starting Monday, we're going to, we're going to, it looks like we're jumping into Valheim. So um, on that note, thanks to everybody that uh, is always part of what we do here. Uh, thanks for being here for the news segment. If you're not moving on to our gameplay of Loop Hero, or if you're catching this after it was recorded live uh, on YouTube, uh, if you are seeing it on YouTube, uh, do me a favor, consider hitting that like and subscribe button. Maybe leave me a comment and uh, we can discuss some of the things we came across in the news segment, okay? Um, maybe even see what you can do about coming down and hanging out with us when we do these live at 6 a.m. Central North American time every single day. Uh, we have a great time. I love discussing the industry, the news, staying current, seeing what's going on, and um, hanging out with people while we do it, getting input and things like that. So uh, see what you can do about coming and hanging out with us and then maybe even moving on and, and chilling with us while we do some gameplay and stuff. So um, other than that, if you're not moving on or you are uh, viewing this as a, a video, then uh, stay healthy, stay safe, be kind to one another, and we will catch you for tomorrow's segment of the news, all right?